This week on TGC News, Bullet Button Reloaded, Video Game Targets, and an Intelligent Combat Site. If you absolutely must reload every spent case you see, then check out AmmoBot, offering one of the most simple and cost-effective ways to automate your Dillon 1050 with no need to worry about complex setup or operation. Capable of running at over 2,000 rounds per hour, this thing will allow your reloading hobby to get serious. To learn more, click the link in the description to head over to AmmoBot.us. Happy Independence Day and welcome back. My name is John Patton and I need you guys to do me a favor. No matter where you're watching this, I need you to go subscribe to TGC on YouTube right now. There's a link down in the comments or the description section so that you can do that right now. Also, I want to say thank you to everyone that shared my video discussing the BS going on in California over the weekend. Over 900,000 views on that as of the time of this recording, so thank you for spreading that message and letting people know what is happening in California is not okay. And speaking of California, this week's first story is about a new product for AR-15s that is sort of a version two to the product known as the bullet button. Essentially, this was created out of need when California started their crap with detachable magazines years back. The bullet button only allows the magazine to be released when the center of the button is depressed with, you guessed it, a bullet or some other object that actually fits. This version two that's being called the BB Reloaded or Bullet Button Reloaded is kind of depressing, really, but also interesting at the same time. Long story short, it allows the magazine to be removed when the upper receiver is opened or disassembled. The product is not yet for sale and the demo doesn't really explain this, but it appears as though it's using the upper bar portion to create leverage on the release mechanism to prevent the magazine from being detached attached while the rifle is closed, but as soon as it opens and releases that tension, you can remove the magazine. They also recommend that you get an extended rear takedown pin to make it easier to frequently open the gun and of course close it when you've got the magazine back in. It seems like a good way to be legal in California when the new laws go into effect, and apparently this was actually in the works for years according to Darren Prince, the inventor of the product. Either way, when this product goes on sale, if his other products are any indication, it will cost somewhere between between 30 and 50 bucks, and even though the overall law itself is a really hard pill to swallow, you do have options. And in I'm just as tired of crowdfunding as you are news, there's a new target company making waves on social media called Autonomous Alloys. Their new system of wirelessly controlled targets is hoping to bring a video game style mechanic to the range. Essentially, these targets are magnetic resetting and have a shielded LED indicator in the base used in various ways throughout the different modes and yada yada yada. It basically pops up with the use of the magnet. Honestly, it looks like it would be a load of fun. Plaguing with 22s is still cheap and still just as fun as it was when I was a kid and now with options like this, I get to be excited as an adult. <laughs> It also appears that you're going to be able to play games with the system, such as racing to hit targets first, or like zombie attacks, deathmatch, stuff like that. Basically just determine on how many hits, or who hits the target first, or things like that, based on the color assigned to that particular target. It's kind of neat. And if this ends up being affordable, it's going to be a great setup for ranges that have nights for new shooters or kids. I mean, this is a good way to get people excited about shooting. Now, some things to note about this system. It's only rated for 22, 380, and 9 millimeter. My guess is because they're probably using cheaper steel, which could potentially either increase profit margins or drop the costs overall. There's no way to know without pricing. There's just not enough info out there on these yet to call that for sure. But the funny thing is, this isn't the first time a product like this has come to market. Back in early fall of 2015, I've actually covered something called auto targets in a hashtag not a review segment. The difference is that the auto targets system uses hit detecting targets to keep score through the app itself, rather than LED indicators of hits downrange that you may not be able to see at longer distances. I'm not gonna do like a side-by-side -side comparison. You should definitely check out the not a review segment on that product. There's a link down below because I think it's got a lot of potential just like this system from Autonomous Alloys. And I was told by these guys that they're gonna be launching their crowdfunding campaign in about a month or so, so I'll definitely be keeping an eye on that.
Steiner Optics, a company best known for being excessively expensive and having generally high quality optics, has introduced a new product that kind of combines a few ideas that have been around in their other products into one that is seemingly the bee's knees. Sort of. Meet the Steiner ICS or Intelligent Combat Sight. This fixed 6x power scope claims to be able to accurately range your targets and then present you with a holdover point on the reticle itself based on the distance and the cartridge that you are shooting. We've seen similar technology before from Burris in their Eliminator scope, and many are claiming that this is the exact same setup out of that optic that was mainly focused on hunting. They're making claims that this optic will give soldiers in the field more consistent first round impacts on target. There's no way for me to know whether or not that's true because there's just not enough data on it yet, but in theory, it makes sense. They're also saying that even though it's optimized for 7.62 by 51 NATO, you can also adjust the rangefinder for 5.56, 300 blackout, and 300 wind mag drop ratios. That's pretty cool if you ask me. The optic also has a small section of Picatinny rail on the top if you want to run some sort of reflex sight for close up work and get, you know, a chin weld going on. Overall, I think the concept is pretty sweet, but I can't help think that this should have had adjustable magnification, even if it was only a little bit like the Elcan Spectre. The reality about this is that it's a $4,000 optic, and I don't know anyone that's willing to drop that kind of coin on a fixed scope for a battle rifle. Now, what I need you guys to do right Right now is check out the company featured in the break and stick around for this week's friendly fire. You're probably already familiar with Lancer systems for their outstanding AR-15 and AR-10 magazines, but did you know that they do more than that? Lancer offers things like shotgun magazine tube extensions, AR hand guards, and even butt stocks, all made from real carbon fiber. They also offer complete rifles like this badass L30 heavy metal chambered in 308. To learn more about Lancer and all of their offerings, head over to facebook.com slash Lancer systems right now. This week's friendly fire question is from Douglas Lance on the TGC Facebook page, and he asks, what qualities do you look for in an outdoor range? This is in regards to trying to find a place to shoot regularly. Honestly, it's a fairly simple equation for me. I look at the cost to join, the offerings of the facility, such as how long the ranges are, do they have multiple ranges, do they have steel targets always there, etc., etc., things like that. And then I look at things like how well the entire place is kept, as well as how many people are there on a regular basis. For instance, my range, the one you guys see on a fairly regular basis, I pay next to nothing. There's almost never anyone there, but it's not exactly the nicest facility I've ever been to. It's certainly good enough for my filming and testing needs, though. I hope that helps, Doug. My friendly fire question to you guys this week, how did you celebrate America's independence this weekend? It's the evening of July 4th when you guys are seeing this, so I want to know how you spent the last few days celebrating America. You can post your answer to that down in the comments below. If you're on Facebook, I want to see pictures. And if you want your question answered right here on TGC News, you can post that on Facebook.com slash The Gun Collective, send it to me on Snapchat, or post it on Instagram and tag me. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. Hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you didn't, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.